I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it, and this has been like a therapy session. This is Coombe Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in Abu Dhabi here at of Bivol and Ramirez. I've got to say, Frank, I've got to say, quite a launch party here, mate. It's a nice little launch party, Abu Dhabi. First of many, mate. Welcome. Is it Abu Dhabi or Abu Dhabi? Abu Dhabi. Sorry, my pronunciation was all wrong there, wasn't it? Essex Brighton now, so... Yeah, Abu Dhabi. We are here, though, in the, it's, uh, one of the new homes of boxing, mate. Absolutely. Um, yeah, great night to launch this weekend's fantastic card. I said to Eddie Earn earlier on, some of your cards are like, where well, Eddie bigs them up. I'm like, is he selling it to me or is he selling it to everyone? But this card, actually, I didn't need to be sold because it's a great card. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you. We worked hard to put together a great card for Coogan Cassius. And here we are. He's impressed. Bivol Ramirez, the fight we've been waiting for. Cameron McCaskill, undisputed. Zelfa Barrett against Rakimov for the for the vacant IBF. Winner fights Joe Caldina. Galau Yafai, Kau Yafai, Aki Biaz, Campbell Hatton, and three locals talent as well. So, big night coming up. Yeah, I think what's more impressive about this card is the fact that when Caldina had to pull out the fight with Rakimov, that you've got Zelfa Barrett in, who's kind of been on the cusp for a while and it's a big opportunity for Zelfa Barrett this weekend. Yeah, massive opportunity. He's next in line in the IBF ratings as well. He's been training hard for a fight in November, so he was ready to go. So I'm glad we could deliver the opportunity. And you know, look, if he can beat Rakimov on, on Saturday night, how big is the Joe Caldina fight back in the UK? Massive. 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 Uh, yeah, like you said, Campbell Hatton, Aki Fiaz, um Cal Yafai making a ring return after, what, two and a half years? Um, Galau Yafai on the bill as well. Yeah, it's going to be a good night. Stacked top to bottom. And like I say, first of many. And the big aim for us here is to grow the sport of boxing and like build stars here locally as well. So we're excited to get started on Saturday. How's life, Frank? Good, mate. Look at us. We're living the dream, aren't we, Coogan? We're out here. In the sunshine, we're at the launch event, we're on a red carpet. No one ever told me I'd be on a red carpet. You were born to be on the red carpet, to be honest with you. Maybe not, maybe. Some kind of red carpet. Have you uh, squashed your beef with Simon Jordan? Uh, he hasn't texted me, so I don't know. Has he got your number? Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, oh, there's no beef, it's all love, really, you know. He's an opinionated radio man. Let's leave him at that. I mean, look, it is what it is, I know. It's his job to be divisive and have opinions, but when you don't know all the facts, it, you can't have a, you can have an opinion, but you really need to know all the facts. But that's what he does every week, not just in boxing, across all different things, so let him get on with it. We get criticised a lot for not asking, not just yourself, but um, Eddie Hearn as well, kind of what people perceive to be like these relevant questions, etc. So Simon Jordan coming in there uh, from, a talk sport angle and ask some questions. Do you see anything wrong in that? No, like that's again, that's his job to ask questions. But it's more with him. He has opinions on things, and his his whole name is Simon Jordan Opinion, isn't it? So like he has opinions, and and he's quite matter of fact with things that again he doesn't know all the details with. But fair enough, that's what he does. He's there to be divisive. He's there to cause a bit of trouble, and that's why he's got his right. That's why he's got the show, isn't it? Um, look, like you guys. I mean, I don't inter you don't interview me that much because you're like above my pay grade. But whoa, 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 whoa! No, but like, I get Umar who does ask me some questions. I think, bloody hell, right, mate? Don't do that to Warren. Also goes then, doesn't it? You know, but it's what it is. That's the conversation between you and Umar, to be honest with you. But yeah, sometimes actually it's better to unleash Umar on you or Eddie Hearn even to get a perspective. Maybe I'm too deep in it, Frank, you know what I mean? No, no, you're, you're the OG, mate. You're the OG, you'll never be replaced. You're here for life, so if people aren't happy, stop watching Coogan's interviews. Watch Umar's. Watch Umar's. Darren Barker's kids just running right on the red carpet there. Someone just asked me if he was mine. What, are you having a baby? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no,
I did ask Eddie whether. Oh! Are you going to be a world champ? Are you going to be yeah, a world champ? Yeah, he's my pension. Are you going to be a world champ? No, <laughs> get it out of my face. Frank, I did ask Eddie whether there was going to be a match from finale on the 17th of December. He said that it wouldn't be pay per view, but there's possibly something there. Normally with Matchroom there is a finale. I know you've got the show on the 10th of December in Leeds uh, with Warrington and etc. But are we going to see a show on the 17th to kind of close off the year for Matchroom? Maybe. Let's see. Um, I think let's let's see how things play out. There's some talk about the 17th, so we'll see how things go. Obviously got a busy, busy run now, you know, kicking off with this weekend. Then we go to uh, Cleveland with Montana Love. Then we've got Dillian White. Uh, come back against Jermaine Franklin, then Estrada Chocolatito, then Josh Warrington in a, actually a great fight against Lopez, who not many people know much about. There's going to be a tough beat fight. Isaac Lowe uh, last yeah. year, I think. Yeah, yeah it was a, so it's going to be a real tough fight. But look, packed. We've got a packed end to the year already. But let's see if we can add another one in. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Frank, uh, in reference to um, Anthony Joshua as well. Anthony Joshua obviously is not going to fight this year. But at some point in the first three months of 2023, I'm assuming we're going to see him. Yeah, correct. That's what we're just working on now. Hopefully, can announce something towards the end of this year. Uh, no, sorry, towards the end of this month. We're in November now. Hopefully, get something out there with a the plan. Um, and we've got a few things on the on on the move. He's coming out here. Actually, we're seeing him later this week. So hopefully, we can get that announced soon. Did you watch the interview between uh, Tyson Fury and True Geordie? from the last couple of days? I didn't watch the interview. I saw the clips at the end where he was going off his off his nut, which he doesn't normally do, does he? He's normally quite composed, Tyson, but uh, maybe he needs some help selling tickets. OK. Uh, what did you think about that line of questioning from True Geordie, which everyone... A few people tweeted me and said, this is how you need to do interviews. What do you think about that? I don't know what he are. I, all I saw was that 20 seconds, the bit at the end where... Tyson was kicking off, so I'm get, I don't know, really know the context of what it was about. What would it take for me to make you walk off an interview? Uh, you couldn't. Straight? You couldn't? You couldn't make me walk off. You finish the interview like a professional? Yeah. All right, fair enough, fair enough. One day I'm going to test you with that, by the way. You won't win. Frank, How long have you known me? Uh, since you was about 12. Exactly. You're not winning the game. Greg Smith, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Uh, a little short and sharp one here. We're looking forward to um, a great night here in Abu Dhabi on the 5th, live on the zone, obviously. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a good week. Everyone's loving it here as well. What can't, What is not to love? We're here. The sun was shining. Now it's night time. Um, it's still a lovely evening. And it's warm, isn't it? It's beautiful. Beautiful temperature. And, uh, yeah, let's enjoy ourselves. And hopefully, like I say, First of many, lots more to come back here for. I said to you earlier, a bit of Tom Hardy going on there from, uh, from the Cray film. Yeah. I can do the voice as well. Go on then, mate. I came here for a proper fucking shootout. A shootout is a shootout. <laughs> You've done twice there. Thank you. <laughs>